This is Disney Entertainment News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Rob Whiteside, and here now are the top Disney Entertainment stories for Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. We start with some sad news from last week, and as you know by now, Gilbert Gottfried, the voice of Iago in Aladdin, as well as the actor behind several iconic non-Disney roles, has passed away at the age of 67. Gottfried's family shared the news about his passing on Twitter, writing, quote, We are heartbroken to announce the passing of our beloved Gilbert Gottfried after a long illness. In addition to being the most iconic voice in comedy, Gilbert was a wonderful husband, brother, friend, and father to his two young children. Although today is a sad day for all of us, please keep laughing as loud as possible in Gilbert's honor. In addition to voicing Iago in Disney's first Aladdin film in 1992, he continued to reprise his role in subsequent material over the past 30 years, including the Aladdin series and Kingdom Hearts. He also had guest roles and provided additional voices on several other Disney series, including Hercules, Timon and Pumbaa, Bear in the Big Blue House, Hannah Montana, as well as the theme park attraction, The Enchanted Tiki Room under new management. Our condolences go out to Godfrey's friends, family, and fellow fans. Well, shortly after the announcement of his passing, the Broadway production of Aladdin took time to remember the late Gilbert Godfrey. According to Dateline at the Curtain Call on Tuesday night's performance, Don Darrell Rivera, who plays Iago on Broadway, led the salute to Godfrey, who voiced Iago in the 1992 film that the show is based on. Rivera said in his tribute, quote, I, along with five other actors worldwide, have the distinct privilege to bring Iago to life on stage, and I think one of the main reasons this character is who he is is because of what Gilbert brought to the animated film, his comedy and that voice, that voice. The voice that the New York Times once said, quote, sounded like a busted Cuisinart. He also related a story of asking Gilbert to sign his VHS copy of Aladdin. Quote, the first time I ever met Gilbert was on this very stage. The curtain had just come down and up comes Gilbert from the wings and he put his arm around me and we snapped a few photos. But then I pulled out this, the Aladdin VHS. He signed it for me and it's still one of the most prized treasured possessions I have. You can watch the full tribute video right here on our website. As Earth Month continues, National Geographic is now offering up a new bundle that includes a Disney Plus subscription. The Nat Geo Premium with Disney Plus deal includes a digital subscription to National Geographic, which offers unlimited access to NatGeo.com and the National Geographic app, exclusive membership-only online content, experiences and events, and the full archive of the iconic magazine dating all the way back to 1888 along with a subscription to Disney+. Plus. Additionally, for the young nature lover in your life, a subscription to National Geographic Kids at 10 issues per year is also included. And for the photography buff, the annual special edition The Year in Pictures comes with the offer. The deal is available in both monthly and annual versions at $10.99 per month, $199 per year, or $190 for two years. The offer only applies to new and returning Disney Plus subscribers with no current annual subscription. So I guess I'm out. Will you be taking advantage of this new offer? Share your thoughts in the comments below. The once Sorcerer Supreme is due for a reckoning in the latest promo for Marvel Studios' Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. The commercial opens with a trippy presentation of the Marvel Studios logo, blending the various iterations of the studio logo that it's had in its history. Before presenting us with an assortment of versions of Doctor Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, found across the multiverse. Narration from the Ancient One, heard in the first Doctor Strange movie, reminds us of the many possibilities of the multiverse before Mordu appears ready to fight. You can catch the full action-packed promo on WDWNT.com. And anticipation for the new film is reaching a fever pitch. Earlier this week, six new character posters were revealed, including one for Strange, Mordu, Wanda Maximoff, America Chavez, Wong, and Christine Palmer, played by Rachel McAdams. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness opens in theaters May 6, and tickets are now available. It seems like we've been talking about this thing forever, and I'm so excited that it's here. Speaking of excited... 
Marvel has released the first trailer for the fourth Thor film, Thor Love and Thunder, featuring not only the titular prince, but also the Guardians of the Galaxy, Korg, Valkyrie, and the return of Jane Foster as Lady Thor. A Lego set previously gave us a look at the film and Lady Thor, but this trailer features the first clips of Jane as Lady Thor. Watch the trailer now on our website. And a new poster was also released featuring Thor standing atop a cliff holding Stormbreaker. Love and Thunder hits theaters on July 8th, 2022. An extract from an upcoming book, Binge Times, Inside Hollywood's Furious Billion Dollar Battle to Take Down Netflix, reveals that Steve Jobs, the prolific founder of Apple, was the big reason that Disney began its shift to digital content so early in the game. Disney's first foray into digital content began in 2005 when the company grew frustrated by piracy concerns per Inc. and Apple Insider. Furious that Desperate Housewives finale was available through piracy a mere 15 minutes after its airing, the company was looking for a solution. And a few months later, Steve Jobs, then a member of the board at the Walt Disney Company, reached out to the newly minted CEO, Bob Iger, to demonstrate, quote, something we're working on, the iPod video. Jobs flew to Burbank to demonstrate his new idea for selling digital TV episodes via iTunes and the upcoming iPod video to get Disney on board using an episode of the then popular series Lost as an example. After striking a deal to add Disney content to the iTunes service, which panicked advertisers and infuriated ABC affiliate owners, episode masters of Lost, Desperate Housewives, Night Stalker, and two Disney Channel shows were transported under high security to Apple's headquarters for digitizing. The deal was revealed on October 12, 2005. The book writes that this was one major step toward the healing of Disney's relationship with Pixar, also owned by Steve Jobs at the time, and leading to the eventual purchase by Disney in 2006. Iger and Jobs built a much stronger rapport than the previous Disney CEO Michael Eisner, under whom the Pixar relationship had soured. Many details of Iger and Jobs' close business partnerships have emerged in recent years, including a remark from Iger that Disney and Apple would likely have merged at some point if Jobs were still alive. Just in time for May the 4th be with you, a behind-the-scenes look at Season 1 of Book of Boba Fett will air on Disney Plus on May 4th, 2022. The special... Disney Gallery, The Book of Boba Fett, will feature interviews with the filmmakers, cast, and crew. It will reveal never-before-seen footage, groundbreaking technology, and the practical effects behind the series. Previous episodes of Disney Gallery focused on The Mandalorian. Skydance New Media and Lucasfilm Games are developing a new narrative drive action-adventure game featuring an original story set in the Star Wars universe. Amy Henning of Legacy of Kane. Jack and Daxter and Uncharted, president at Skydance New Media, said, quote, I've often described how seeing Star Wars in 1977 essentially rewired my 12-year-old brain, shaping my creative life and future indelibly. I'm elated to be working with Lucasfilm Games again to tell interactive stories in this galaxy that I love. We couldn't be more thrilled to be working again with Amy. She and the Skydance New Media team have the talent and ambition to create a unique Star Wars adventure, said Douglas Riley, VP of Lucasfilm Games. Their vision for making narrative-driven and engaging interactive entertainment makes this collaboration very exciting. We've been working hard with their team of experienced and talented developers, and we're looking forward to sharing more with Star Wars fans when the time is right. We couldn't be happier to be working with Lucasfilm Games, said Julian Beek, executive vice president and GM of Skydance New Media. We look forward to taking fans on an epic journey with this Star Wars action-adventure title. For the absolute latest in Disney Entertainment news, head on over to WDWNT.com and follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms. If you're enjoying this show, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to Unplanned Downtime on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. And if you enjoy Disney movies and TV shows, don't forget to join us for our weekly review show, Deep in the Plus. We do that show live every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and you can find previous episodes available on demand right here on Unplanned Downtime. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news and entertainment, this is Rob Whiteside saying don't have a good day.
Have a great day. We'll see you next time.